Canada is a country rooted in the rule of law, and the protection of our citizens is paramount. That's why, when our law enforcement and intelligence officials began pursuing credible allegations that agents of the government of India were directly involved in the killing of a Canadian citizen, Hardeep Singh Nijar, on Canadian soil, we responded. As the RCMP Commissioner stated earlier, they have clear and compelling evidence that agents of the Government of India have engaged in and continue to engage in activities that pose a significant threat to public safety. This includes clandestine information gathering techniques, coercive behaviour targeting South Asian Canadians, and involvement in over a dozen threatening and violent acts, including murder. While attempts have been made by the RCMP and national security officials to work with the Government of India and Indian law enforcement counterparts on this matter, they have been repeatedly refused. This is why, this weekend, Canadian officials took an extraordinary step. They met with Indian officials to share RCMP evidence which concluded six agents of the Government of India are persons of interest in criminal activities. And despite repeated requests to the Government of India, it has decided not to cooperate. The evidence brought to light by the RCMP cannot be ignored. It leads to one conclusion. It is necessary to disrupt the criminal activities that continue to pose a threat to public safety in Canada. That is why we acted, because we will always first and foremost, stand for the rights of Canadians to feel safe and secure in their own country. We will never tolerate the involvement of a foreign government threatening and killing Canadian citizens on Canadian soil, a deeply unacceptable violation of Canada's sovereignty and of international law. I know the events of the past year and today's revelations have shaken many Canadians, particularly those in the Indo-Canadian and Sikh community. Many of you are angry, upset, frightened. I get that. This shouldn't happen. Canada and India have a long and storied history rooted in people-to-people -people ties, business and trade. But we cannot abide by what we're seeing right now. Canada fully respects the sovereignty and territorial integrity of India, and we expect the Indian government to do the same for Canada. As Prime Minister, it is my responsibility to provide reassurance to those who are feeling their safety has been compromised, but most importantly, it is my responsibility to take action and to never hesitate in doing what is necessary to protect Canadians. I think it is obvious that the Government of India made a fundamental error in thinking that they could engage in supporting criminal activity against Canadians here on Canadian soil, whether it be murders or extortion or other violent acts. It is absolutely unacceptable for any country, any democracy, that upholds the rule of law. That is why we have taken such significant measures, why the RCMP chose to come out today and disrupt the pattern of Indian diplomats collecting through questionable and illegal means information on Canadian citizens that were then fed to criminal organizations that would then take violent actions from extortion to murder against Canadians. No country, particularly not a democracy that upholds the rule of law, can accept this fundamental violation of its sovereignty. Canada fully accepts and respects the sovereignty and the territorial integrity of India. We expect India to do the same 
In this case, they did not. Uh, at the end of last week, uh, I highlighted how incredibly important the meeting between our national security advisors in Singapore this weekend was going to be. Uh, he told me that he was aware of that meeting. I impressed upon him that it needed to be taken very, very seriously. The response of the Indian government has been to deny, to obfuscate, to attack me personally and the integrity of the government of Canada and its officials and its police agency. 